In the heart of Hilliard, Ohio, nestled just past the fair food, just past the twister and the Ferris wheel, and not far from where some of Northwest Chapel's finest were scoring ribbons and trophies, like multiplying rabbits, sits a tent devoid of markings except for a simple sign that holds a powerful message. So the tent uh, is at the Franklin County Fair and Bruce Brownfield is the one who kind of heads it up at Northwest Chapel. And what we do is we have a red tent with some chairs inside and there's a sign like right on the street that says know your future for free. And so that kind of brings people in and that way we can kind of transition into saying, hey, like we can't read your mind and we don't know the future, but we can tell you what happens when you die. When I first uh, was garenaed and told to come to the gospel tent at the Franklin County Fair, uh, I was terrified. And it was the last thing on earth that I wanted to do. I always use the excuse of like, oh, I'm an introvert, so I don't really talk to a lot of people, and going up to new people that I don't know kind of scares me. And so I really didn't want to have to step out of my comfort zone and do that. I could have said no to Martin, but in my heart, I knew that it would be a really good experience for me because I know how much it scares me and how much I try to avoid it. And so I really felt like it was God kind of pushing me to do something that I don't often do, but something that would be really good for me. Bruce Brownfield sat me down with a couple other people and gave us a really nice explanation of what we're doing. And he kind of walked us step by step through each of like the phases of sharing the gospel. And so after that, I felt much more equipped to share. And then these three probably 14, 15 year old kids walked into the tent and Bruce was, Bruce was like, Shirley, why don't you talk to them? And in my head I was like, oh, I have to go and I could have left because um, I was still scared to do it. Uh, but I was able to just sit down with them and they, um, I told them, I was like, hey, I, I can't read your mind. I'm not a prophet, I'm not a fortune teller, but I can kind of tell you what happens after you die. So they, they told me, yeah, you know, we think about what happens when we die. And one of the kids was like, that's actually so scary to me. I don't like to think about it. And I really just hope that I'm a good enough person to go to heaven instead of hell when I die. I asked, how many of you have ever lied to your parents or to your friends? And they all raised their hands and I raised my hand too. Sorry, mom and dad. Um, and so then the next question I asked was, okay, how many of us have taken something that doesn't belong to us, whether it was from a store or from a friend or from a sibling? And we all raised our hands again. And so I said, how does that feel? We've gotten two questions into the good person test and we've all already failed. Um, and they were kind of like, yeah, like I guess we're not really that good of people. And I said, so how, like, how do you think that's gonna measure up in heaven? Like, do you think that that's gonna be good enough or would you like to be certain that you are, that you have a hope? Um, but then I was able to say, like present John 3.16 and I said, God knows that we are sinful people. He created us and he knows that, he knew that we were gonna mess up. And so he provided a way for us. So um, John 3.16 says, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. They were kind of uncertain and they were young so they were kind of joking through it. Um, but in the end I was able to just kind of say, you know, like Jesus loves you and he did do this for you. And whether you are ready to accept it or not, he, um, he's a good father and he loves you. And would you let me pray for you? at least like for your day as you go forward. And they said, yes. And so I was able to pray for them. And then I said, amen, and high-fived my friends and gave them a cool bracelet. And then they were off. So I don't know what happened, um, but I do think that seeds were planted, at least in their hearts. And maybe they'll be thinking about this for, I don't know, the rest of their lives. It was really cool to see how, just because I was willing that God worked through me and was able to give me the courage to do it. I think it's so cool that Bruce has this ministry that he's so faithful to and that Northwest Chapel provides um, a way for him to do it. And so I think 
through Northwest Chapel and through Bruce and through this gospel tent, we were able to reach a lot of people. And um, if they didn't come to Christ right then and there, we know that seeds are planted and someone else may come along and kind of maybe have to replant a little bit, but water and mentor and help them grow.